Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include European Parliament wasting money on public awareness drives, says British MEPs. Denmark moves closer to referendum on EU opt-outs. Croatia clashes with EU over extradition laws. EU politicians want to ban packets of 10 cigarettes to cut down on consumption. Plus, European Union is still the world's biggest aid donor, but misses its own targets. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, a £5.6 million information campaign being launched by the European Parliament with the aim of raising the EU's public profile and boosting turnout in next May's European elections has been branded a waste of money and an attempt to bribe voters. Conservative MEPs criticised the European Parliament for throwing taxpayers' money at its difficulties with public perception. This is, of course, additional funding above and beyond that spent recruiting a team of folks to work on social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter in an effort to improve the public's opinion of the EU. Actions always speak louder than words. The EU has abandoned many of the people of, the, of Europe and yet continues to pour funds into projects outside the Eurozone. I don't think it matters how much money the kleptocrats throw at the propaganda machine. You can't feed and clothe people with leaflets, press releases, tweets and posts on Facebook. <music> Danish opposition leader Lars Lech Rasmussen has ratcheted up the pressure on Prime Minister Hel Thorning Schmidt to launch a referendum on two of Denmark's EU opt-outs by calling for one at the earliest opportunity. Rasmussen, former Prime Minister and leader of the Liberals, the biggest opposition party, wants Denmark to get rid of its opt-outs on defence and justice via a quick referendum, possibly in May next year, to coincide with the European elections. Zagreb could face legal action for failing to apply EU extradition law, the European Commission said on Monday, weeks after Croatia became the bloc's newest member. The small Adriatic state became the 28th member of the European Union on July 1st, making a recovery from years of war after Yugoslavia collapsed in the 1990s. Days before entry, Zagreb changed its laws to prevent authorities from extraditing suspects of crimes committed before 2002, when EU rules were changed, potentially protecting veterans from Croatia's 1991-1995 to independence war from facing inquiries elsewhere in the EU. The Commission has accused Zagreb of contravening EU rules and said its top officials would meet next to discuss whether punitive actions should be taken. The fact that Croatia's national legislation has been changed a few days before a session to contradict EU law is really not a minor issue for us, a spokeswoman for EU Justice Chief Vivian Redding told a news briefing. This infringement of EU law goes to the very heart of European judicial cooperation. Well, clearly the EU has in mind extradition and prosecution of certain individuals in Croatia. Again, this highlights the power of the EU to supersede national laws and effectively override a nation's sovereignty. So much for it all being about trade and a common market. Cigarettes could be banned from being sold in packets of 10 in an EU bid to prevent children from starting to smoke. The planned curbs, which would also hit menthol and slim cigarettes, could outlaw the sale of more than half of all tobacco currently sold in Britain. Tobacco giants have lashed out against the proposed legislation, claiming that it will deprive the Treasury of revenue as smokers turn to the black market. Europe maintained its position as the planet's biggest aid donor last year, stumping up 55.2 billion of overseas assistance. But the bloc has made no progress towards its target of providing 0.7% of gross national income in aid by 2015, a yearly audit says. 
Keep cranking those Heidelbergs, Mr. Draghi. Your philanthropic friends are of a mind to give away even more taxpayers' moolah. Never mind the Greeks are starving and the Spanish are homeless. We need more money for dirt roads in Angola and additional funding to help Caribbean banana growers get their produce straight. Today in our video library, let's take a look at the other side of the fence with the situation in Syria. Mimi on her channel Syrian Girl makes some valid points and is frank and emotional about the plight of the people in her country. Now she adds a new perspective on what the possible reasons could be for this move by the USA to act in Syria. Personally, my prayers are for the people of Syria. Those poor people have had their lives and homes and country destroyed. And frankly, it does look as though Syria has and continues to be used as a political pawn in a global strategy. I speak daily with people from all over the planet via Google+, and whilst there are often broad cultural differences in our political, cultural and religious views, in every case, we celebrate the differences. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit nightly news. I'll see you soon. <laughs>